boys and girls. How are you today? I see you're all by your seats and ready to go for the day. But where is Oscar and Sarah? Is that them coming now? Well, I better go warn them that school's ready to start. We'll start our day with a reading from the Bible. And today I'm selected from Psalms 100. So stand quietly and reflect on the words that I am going to share with you now. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. What perfect words to start our days, children. But you know, just last year, when our president was Benjamin Harrison, he felt we should learn some words of patriotism. Words written by Mr. Francis Bellamy of Massachusetts. Now I know some of you have been practicing diligently and know the words well. If you do, you may face our flag. If you still need Miss Miller's help, look this way and I'll help you along. Everybody's going to stand straight and tall, Put your right hand upon your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What wonderful words. So inspiring. Now, I think we are should all sound in fine voice today. Let's sing America, my country tis of thee. At the count of three then. Ready? One, two, three. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. Let's try that again, boys. A bow from all of you. Girls, your curtsy. You be sure to show that to your parents when you go home today, too. Our first lesson today is our elocution lesson. Now, you know elocution is a proper way of speaking. We must all know how to speak properly, or our fellow man may see us as being ignorant. So, let us begin. Everybody, sit up straight. And children, you eighth graders, you better set an example for our little ones. These, some of these words are quite difficult, so I think we should be ready by now. Ready? Begin. Betty bought a bit of butter for her batter, but the bit of butter was bitter. So Betty bought a bit of better butter. And the better butter made her bitter, batter, better. Are you sure that was your best? Look at the way you're sitting. Are your feet flat on the floor? Are your hands down and your shoulders back? Ezekiel, I don't think that's true. Sit up. Let's try this again. One more time. Sit up, everybody. Begin. Betty bought a bit of 
butter for her batter. But the bit of butter was bitter. So Betty bought a bit of better butter. And the better butter made her bitter batter better. I think that was better that time. Now, as you can see, we always do our arithmetic next. And I'm quite prepared. Look, I have our work for our third class, and our fourth, and our sixth. And of course, some of you will be coming up to do your oral arithmetic with me, your mental math. But for now, I think I bet. Wait, I made you a promise yesterday, didn't I? I promised we could practice for our parents' presentation. Have you all memorized your poems for Friday next? Oh, I'm going to see. We're going to have you come up and practice those poems. Boy, I tell you, we are very, very busy here at school, aren't we? Our school year has just gotten started in a sense because we have so much more to learn always. Boys and girls, going to school in 1893 was a lot different than what today, isn't it? You know, boys and girls, your day would have been very, very different. It would have started around 8.30 in the morning, and then, boys and girls, you know that you would have arithmetic and reading in the morning, you would have to come up and recite for the teacher and do your works on slates. That's a lot different than writing on paper. There are so much more different things that would happen as well in the afternoon. Well, you would have geography and history. You would have your science, which was not quite as advanced as today. But you would learn a lot about the animals around you. And you would even have special days like Friday. Friday, why you would have spelling bees, so you better be practicing your words. Or maybe a history and geography bee. Have you been studying your history and geography? I'm wondering. And don't forget, you might even get to do those poems that you're practicing. So those are all very important things. One more thing, your school year would have been different as well. Did you know that the school year for a one-room school started at the harvest around the end of October or the beginning of November? And then what would happen is it would stop around April when you plant your seeds for the next year. School didn't just stop then for some of the little ones. In the summertime, the real little ones, the first and second graders, they got to go to school because Mom and Dad wanted them out from under their feet as they were getting busy with the farm and kind of putting up things for the winter time. So children, it was a much different year for them. Also, discipline was different. My goodness, there was no fooling around. Oh! 